Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. This is the second in a series of four videos about masking and this one is specifically about using the pen tool. Now, uh, it's quite an emotional video for me and the reason is I started using Photoshop in 95. Uh, it's currently 2020 and I'm only really two years into feeling happy with the pen tool. Um, I, so many times I've tried to learn how to use a pen tool and I've tried to do good selections and it's just been an absolute car crash. And um, so whereas Whereas you might see a lot of tutorials where people will make selections with the pen tool, this tutorial is specifically about how to get good. I'm not showing you how the pen tool works. I'm sure you probably all know that. I'm showing you how you can start to bring the pen tool into your current workflow for making selections and how to get good. Now, I hated the pen tool and everyone I know hates the pen tool, um, but now it's the best tool. The, as soon as I start a product image, I'm gonna draw a mask with the pen tool. I'm gonna make sure it's absolutely accurate and I'm going to refer back to that mask for applying all of my effects, for doing background removal, for, for separating uh, one thing from another, the foreground from the background, the product from its environment. Like I love the pen tool and I want you to love the pen tool too. So this is a video that's hopefully going to explain a learning path that you can take that's going to be painless, that's going to give you safety nets to save your work as you go, save your paths as you're moving forward through your projects. And I'm hoping that by the end of this video, you'll feel confident enough to start using the pen tool and give it a week or two, what I'm really hoping is that you're gonna be the boss, the absolute boss of the pen tool. So guys, let's get straight into the video. Enough of this chat, so just jump straight into Photoshop and check out exactly what I'm talking about. Let's get busy with this pen. Okay, so now we're gonna start talking about using the pen tool. And to start with, I would just wanna to talk to you a little bit about your emotional well-being. And um, what I mean by that is that when I started trying to use the pen tool, I mean, I've watched a million tutorials and I'm sure you've seen the same thing. People will say in their Photoshop tutorial, oh, I'm just gonna separate this from the background now. And then there'll be a sped up little time-lapse thing where you see them doing hundreds and hundreds of tiny little dots and working the way around with these really small dots. Um, and it's all very time consuming actually trying to do that. And that's why it's all sped up. No one wants to sit and watch anybody do these thousand dots on the way around the, um, their object. And the truth of the matter is nobody wants to draw a thousand dots on the way around the object either. So there is a better method. Now I found a website uh, one day just purely by chance that had like um, an interface where you could practice using the pen tool. And I realized straight away by the, um, the games that were set out on this interface that I'd been approaching it all wrong and I could get something like this done with very few clicks actually. Um, and so I set about forcing myself to use the pen tool without doing a million clicks all the way around. And sometimes it's really successful and sometimes I'd get halfway around and then I'd cock everything up and I'd have to start again. And it was just really frustrating and annoying. And I realized something about um, selections and channels. To, to start with, let's just make a really small selection. And I'm gonna show you something that you can do to protect your progress and it should make you feel like you've got a safety net um, and you can crack on by making some selections and you're not gonna lose anything, you're not gonna mess anything up and you can make a sequential selection saving as you go. So you may or may not know this, but you've got here channels and paths. Um, all these channels instantly, I'm gonna get rid of them. These are the, um, these are the masks that existed on this image before I flattened it. Look at this masking. I know what you're thinking. That's coming in the next tutorial. We're going to do this in the next tutorial. So I'm going to get rid of these. Um, if you haven't seen the, um, if you haven't seen the tutorial where I just do a lab walkthrough, so you can kind of see what all these masks were used for, uh, I'll link it in the top right hand corner. So I'm just going to get rid of all of these masks that I've made elsewhere. That, now these are stored in my channels, um, and the channels are your, whoops. Your channels are your red, green, and blue channels. So this is my RGB composite. If I just look at this, that's how much red there is in each pixel. So this has got pure red and not very much red because it's nearly black. This is how much green and this is how much blue. And where it's white, there's loads. And where it's black, there's none. And when you mix that amount of green and blue together, you end up with your RGB composite and it looks like this. So I'll do a thing on channels another day, but as an overview, here's your channel um, 
channel panel just here. And you've got channels and paths. Let me get rid of this working path one as well. That's a leftover. Now that means that I can save some channels and I can save some paths. So the way I'm going to do that is first I'm going to zoom right in here and I'm going to start working my way around this object. Now this looks pretty straight to me, but I am just going to give it a little handle here just in case. And let's put a little one here and a little one here. Now this is just standard, what you'll see people doing on their regular tutorials. And let's say I get this far and I think I'm confident with this, but I'm afraid I might mess up the next bit. What I can do is right click to close my shape. I'm going to right click in the middle and click make selection. And unlike what you've seen in other um, pen tutorials, I'm not going to further the selection. I'm going to click zero. So it is super crisp. And now I've got a selection. Now um, I'm on a Mac. So guys, my, um, my, my whole screen isn't being saved. I've got like a portion of my screen. So I'm going to talk you through what I'm going to do. Um, you can follow me on uh, Windows or Mac. It won't be any different, but my mouse is going to go just out of the screen. So you'll just have to trust me. I wouldn't lie to you. I'm going to click on select and I get this drop down menu. And if I scroll down, I can go to save selection and I can give this selection a name. And so I'm going to call it um, main mask and it will show up here in my channels and I can click on it. If I control click, it makes my selection. If I go control or command D to deselect, I can reselect by clicking on this. Brilliant. So I've saved that work. I've also still got my work path here. Now this work path for deselect is the um, path that I've currently made. So I could give that a name and save it as well if I really wanted to. I'm not going to just yet. Now, let's say I want to do this next section just here. I can click, I'll click just before the corner and I'll click, well actually, let's go control Z. I'll click and just give it a little handle and I'll click just after the corner and I'll pull this one out until it matches that curve. I'll click here. I'll put one right at the end. I'm going to treat this as if it's a super sharp corner. I know that it's not, but I just want to be quick here. Put one in the middle and we'll come up to the edge here and this looks like one big curve. So I'm going to try and curve that out here curve it out here and we'll come to the end. Boom. Now let's say I'm happy with that. I make another closed shape. I right click on it and go to make selection. I'm not going to feather it. I'm going to say okay. And now I'll come back up to my select, save selection. And I get some choices. Check it out. Instead of leaving it to the default, which is channel new, which is where it made a new channel before, I can actually now select my main mask. I can either replace it or add to it, subtract it or intersect. Now I'm going to click add to channel and click on OK. And now if I deselect, when I right click on this, you'll notice both of those selections have been made. If I come back to my layer mask and with that selected, I apply that mask. I can clearly see the mask that I drew. Now it's not perfect because I was just rushing to show you what, um, what this method entails. But if I had this bit of masking done, there would be nothing to stop me now getting my brush and oh, why is my brush a crazy size? Hold on a second. Let's bring that down. A load, a load brush. Um, and I'll change my color to white. I'm working on my mask. I'm just going to paint in the gaps. So now I've got this chunky mask. Now you'll notice I didn't feather it. And let me just show you why quickly. If I double click on the mask, I get the mask's properties and I can feather it here. So when I see people um, working on a selection, and then they say, oh, I'll feather that because it gives me a more natural edge. Well, you don't know exactly how much feathering you're going to need. So maybe it's better to not feather your mask. Leave it super crisp. In fact, like I showed you in the previous um, tutorial, you can actually look at your mask and then you can apply your feathering directly to it. So this is obviously super crisp and I can blur it accordingly. In fact, because it's a mask, I might want it all super crisp apart from one particular area, in which case I could maybe choose my lasso tool, select an area, go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur, and blur that by like two pixels. Now this gives me like ultimate control over my mask. At this point, I haven't had to guess at how much feathering I needed while I'm making the selection process. So just so you know, guys, when it comes to making a selection, if you're watching anybody else's tutorial, you'll regularly see them make a selection and then say, oh, I'll feather that by two pixels. Mm, I probably wouldn't. I'd do it at the end when I can see what I'm doing. 
Okay, I'm going to remove this mask. Um, delete the mask and we're back to square one. So now that we know we can have a safety net, if I needed to remove a complex shape, I could do it a curve at a time just while I'm developing my skill. I would recommend that that is the way that you do it. That way you don't have to be really, really accomplished at using the pen tool to get going with it today. You can do it a little bit at a time and every time you're happy with the work you've done, you can click to save your selection. So I said I'd show you two uh, really simple things to make you brilliant at the pen tool. And so let's just cut straight to that. I'm gonna click here, I think. This will do for my starting point. And in the middle of this section, whenever I've got a long straight line, rather than assuming it's perfectly computer straight, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna put a, a, a single point and then drag the handles out. Now, if you don't know about the way the pen tool works, these are called Bezier curves. And you can search for them on Google. You'll see a lot of different programs use them for a number of different things. But basically we've got a start point and the end point, and then these handles allow me to drag to add um, a dimension to this curve. Now I can rotate it and by pulling them out, I can change how extreme the curve is. Now at this point, I just want it to be mostly straight, but I'm just assuming there could be a small bend in. So if I've got a straight line, I'll always bang a point in the middle and drag the handles out and it'll help me to visualize how straight that line really is. Now check it out. I'm gonna put another point just here and my line will continue. Oh, in fact, I'm gonna put a point there that's got a handle on it. And this handle's crazy, it's wrong. What I need is for this one to have a bit of curvature as it goes around this edge. And when I put one in here, I want this to have a little bit of curvature. And then I want to come straight out the other side and straight down here. Now this is bad pen work. But I can fix it. If I hold down command or control and I'm using the pen tool, oh also just let me just show you this for a second. You'll notice when I mouse over I get this minus sign. I can for example click there and delete that point. So now I've just got this straight line. Well this is a disaster. This isn't what I want at all. Let's see if I can put this right. I'm going to hold down the command key and now I've got this um, new tool. My pen has mutated into a different tool and I can drag this point around. So if I put a, pe a pen point in a really stupid position, I can reposition it. And then I can come here again, holding down command or control, I can grab hold of my anchor and pull it in until it fits my curve exactly how I want it. Now down here, I've got a curve that's messy. I'm gonna hold down command and control and we'll have a look at it. It's going into, this one's got a curve and this one comes straight out. So I might prefer this to be curved actually. Now if I hold down Alt or Option, you'll notice that I've now got this little triangular tool and that means I can click and add handles to this. So if I've got a corner piece, I can drag the handles individually out and turn it into a bezier. But if I'd accidentally made it as a bezier, if I hold down control or option, I get this little angle tool and I can click on it again. And now I'm back to having the original um, straight in, straight out point that I had. There's no, um, if I don't have any, if I don't drag a handle out like this, it just comes straight in. This curvature is being set by this handle and it comes straight in and straight out the other side. So now I'm gonna position this one by holding down command, because I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna position this one back where I want it. And my curve doesn't look exactly right there, does it? So I think I'm gonna pull this out just a little bit more. And what I might do, in fact, let's do this first, let's fiddle around with it. I'm gonna hold down command and control and drag this one back to where it should be. And you'll see if I come right in here, there's a gap, isn't there? So I've got problems. I'm gonna do is put this one here. I'm gonna drag this one across. So this is getting minute now, minute details. And I'm gonna get my pen tool and put a new point just here. I'll add in a little bit of corner work here and come out. Now no one is ever gonna zoom in this far into this picture. <laughs> so I am pixel peeping now. But the point is that when I make a, a when I make a mark with my pen tool, it's not set in stone. If I completely ruin everything, I can always go back and make a couple of points, move them around. And I feel a bit like this one here. 
I could do with this angle being slightly different. So if I hold down this and drag whoop, like this, now I've got a little bit more control over the angle. But you can see it's messing up the relationship between these two. I've got this curve here. You can only just see this blue line. But I can always just grab this one point. I've held down um, Alt and Option. And now I've got individual control over the in point and the out point. So I'm able to position this one exactly how I want it here. That looks good. And relative to this curve, I think here. Okay. Now, I'm happy enough with that. So I'm just going to come in just like I showed you before and close this off. Oh, and let's zoom right out. Boom. There's my new selection. I'm going to right click on it and say make selection. Okay. And I'm going to save this Ooh, hang on. by doing this select, save selection. I'm going to save it to main mask. I'm going to add it to the channel and click on OK. So now if I go to my channels, my main mask is coming along. All right, actually, it's not doing too badly. I can click over here and apply that mask, which is, um, oh, hold on, apply that mask. And that'll do for now. And again, I could um, go back and fiddle with that. Now you'll notice my working path here is that path that I just made. The path that I made is my current working path. And to save that, I can call this left hand side. Now, as soon as I give it a name, it's saved. So if I, um, I'll make sure it's not selected. So I'm, I'm not working on that path. But you'll notice if I start working now, I've got a new work path and I could give that a name. Let's call it square. And while that's selected, I can keep working on it and adding to it. But actually what's more likely to happen while I'm just trying to learn and improve my skill is I'm going to want to click off that and make a new path and then call that triangle. So if I've been saving my channel and adding to my channel as I go and checking it out so that I can see how it's coming along and potentially applying it to my image so I can see how it's coming along. I can, I can just keep building a mask. But this, the other step that's useful is to save your working paths. And I'll show you why that's useful. If I click on this left hand side one, I'm recalling my previous work and I can see here that actually I've got a bit of a gap, haven't I? So if I select my, um, I may as well just use the pen tool. If I hold down command again and click on it, it's highlighted. And I can see that what's causing the problem is the position of this handle here. So I could drag this back across now and drag this one back in. And now my selection has changed. So what I might want to do is just right click and say, make a selection. Okay, I'm not going to feather it. Now this is selected. All I've got here is a selection, but over here in my channels, I do still have my main mask and I can click on it and work on it directly. So if I wanted to save this, I can get my brush. I'm just painting um, directly onto the mask. And um, oh, but let me just point this out to you. You'll notice if I've got a white brush and I try and paint here, can't paint anywhere because this is currently selected and I can only paint in the selected area. Now I want to paint outside it. So I'm going to hold down command or control shift and I and that will invert my selection. And now look, I can paint in the black. I don't want to do that. I want to swap my colors either by clicking here or by pressing X. And now I'm just going to paint some black straight down this side. That's going to fix my mask for me where I've made a mistake. So again, I can go back and edit everything that I've done. It's a non-destructive workflow and it's a great way for me to learn how to use the pen tool on my daily work. I can I can be pretty fearless. Now you notice I did that on the saved channel, but not on the mask that's applied here. So let's do it here as well. Um, I want to look at my mask. Oh, hold on. I'm being clumsy. Sorry, guys. Let me click back on this one that I've just edited. And I want to look at my mask, please. Here it is. And again, I'm going to go Control Shift I to invert my selection and then just draw up to the line. And so I'm doing this so you can see it working. But if I if I wasn't looking at my mask, 
I could still look at this directly on, hold on, see what I'm doing? I'm drawing on the layer, not the mask. There, draw directly while I'm looking at my work and make sure that what I'm doing is jiving properly with the image that I'm trying to create. Now I wanna point out two things to you before we finish here. Number one, I'm not making very many points. I'm trying to, if I just deselect this, I'm trying to use my pen tool to describe a shape with the fewest amounts of points possible. If I've got a curved corner, um, in fact, let me do that again. I'm gonna start my, my mask off. I'm gonna pull out here. I'm gonna get to the end and just put a little handle on because I know I'm gonna address a corner. I'm gonna roughly do my corner, probably quite badly, and then carry on. And once I've got my, my mask, my line around the corner, I'm gonna go back and finesse it until I feel like it matches the corner exactly. And if I need to do something whereby um, I've changed this one to be a straight line, for example, or if I want individual control over my handles, I can do that by holding down Alt or Option, and I can always then put them back to the way they were by using the same key. So these two keyboard shortcuts, Command or Control, Alt or Option, while you're using the pen, will allow you to continually finesse your line so you don't have to do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of points. You can do five or six points and just get your curve to match exactly what you see on the page. And then so while you're learning, while you're just developing your skill and your confidence, you can always save your paths very, very useful thing to do. And then I would personally save everything to a single channel and then keep adding to that channel and know that even once you finish with that channel, you could still come back, alter your paths or draw some new paths, make new selections and use them to finesse this channel until the mask that you want is perfect. And you can apply it to your mask here um, and, and just keep modifying and keep fiddling. Okay, in the next um, video on masking series, we're going to do these complex masks using what's called channel pause, luminosity masking, and um, I will hopefully see you in the next video, guys.